Kubrick. Oh my god, thank you for the tier 2 sub 17 months in a row. That is so awesome. How you doing, man? Uh, Katobo positive. Hey, who? Uh, welcome, everybody. We're doing spooky games. Uh, I'm here. Iggy is kind of here, and Zombie, Zombie Cat will be here. Uh, gonna give it a couple minutes, let people flood in, because you know, we're starting. A little earlier than we usually do. And uh, we're going to try to make this a regular thing, doing retro games on the weekends. Just they're going to be horror themed right now. And we're starting here with 1992's Alone in the Dark. Which is very Resident Evil before Resident Evil was a thing. Oh, Kubrick, you're back home, right? Not yet? Okay. Yeah, when you get back, we gotta do some stuff together, man. <clears throat> mm, excuse me. Anywho, um, yeah, this is uh, it's basically Resident Evil, just 1992 polygons. Uh, you'll see. I'll uh, I'll let uh, our main character here do the introduction. We can choose either character. Uh, but 
Oh yeah, Far Cry Six. That's that looks fun. Uh, most of the games follow Edward Carnby here, so we'll use him. On my door, a dull brass plate says "Private Detective." The few friends I have call me Carnby. The others call me the Reptile. I don't care to think what my banker calls me. These days, I leave my letters unopened. Bills and threats to send in the receivers just ruin my day. When an antique dealer called Gloria Allen contacted me, I slipped into my best shirt, holstered my thirty-eight, and got to her shop as fast as I could. I was expecting something sordid. Blackmail, probably. Boy, was I wrong. What I was asked to do was visit a property called Dorsetto and find a piano in the loft. It was an old piano with secret drawers, the kind people who buy stuff in antique stores go crazy over. The Dorsetto house is supposed to be piled high with classy junk, furniture, books, paintings. It looked like whoever <coughs> owned Dorsetto was about to get cleaned out. Uh, Iggy, are you here? Heard movement. I am. I just okay. didn't want to talk over the thing. I was going to bring up the subject of money when Gloria Allen handed me $150 and a key. I kept myself from grinning at the thought of my banker's surprise. He doesn't like his victims getting away. I looked over a copy of the police report. The former owner of Dorsetto, a guy called Jay Hartwood, had hanged himself in the loft. The coroner concluded it was a clear-cut case of suicide. I promised Gloria Allen I'd give the place a look over. My report will be ready in a couple of days. I've been reading up on the history of the old house. It's the kind of place ghosts run away from in terror. Grizzly murders, uh -oh. curses, lunacy. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, just, Luckily, you know, where ghosts run away from in terror. Devil worship makes me smile. <clears throat> so this is my idea of a paid vacation. And uh, that that's the setup for the game. An asshole private detective was sent to a murder mansion. Murder mansion. Should have just said mansion, but murder came out of my mouth first. Like I said, this was 1992. So enjoy that. <laughs> and are those frogs? Looking at frog. Frog. Oh no. Oh yeah, someone played Frogger. Look at them graphics. They're like 3D. Like Star Fox level 3D. That's good. Uh, I don't think it was meant to be a frog jump scare. I think that's just the game playing a little faster than it should. <clears throat> frog scare. Ribbit. Let's, everybody, let's get a frog in chat. Instead of Pog. Do we, we have those? I don't know. So, uh, I've never actually played this. I've watched Pro Jared play it. And I remember a little bit of, from his playthrough. And I did play test it a little bit earlier today. The controls are terrible. Oh no. <clears throat> Uh, there's going to be a lot of dying, a lot of reloading, 
Maybe some screaming and rage. We'll see. <clears throat> I'm not steering yet. This is all intro cutscene. Um, yeah, tank controls, but all by the arrow keys. Fighting is done by holding space and jamming on the arrow keys. To run, you have to tap an arrow key, let go, and tap it again. First, hmm. we're gonna save, game, start, because we can immediately die. So yeah, that sounds about right. This is run, by the way. This is run speed. Uh, that was uh, attack, but I don't want to attack. I want to push. I'm gonna block this window because in about 15 seconds, something's gonna jump through it and kill me. I may have pushed it a little too far. And in a few more seconds, uh, something's gonna come through the obvious trap door. So I'm gonna block that too. The oil lamp is the only way you can see in a bunch of areas. And you can hear the other one beating on the trap door. Oh yeah, this game is full of some serious moon logic. Standard, uh, you know. Okay, it's time to time to lick the boot. It's time to combine the newspaper with the salmon. You know? Yeah. So uh hitting enter brings up this menu. I have 20 health. I have four bullets in this rifle. I have nothing in the oil lamp. Uh, and when I get down here, this changes what spacebar does. Right now, I want it to be open in search. So I double tap. Uh, I double tap. I double tap. I double tap. I <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> Look at that face. This is peak performance right here. <laughs> uh. Hmm. I should have a walkthrough, but uh, I don't know why I can interact with this stool like this. It's silly. I find a book. Take. What's in this? Fragment of the Myth of the Golden Fleece. Translation, Edouard de Villeban. Hesperides Publications. Then, Perseus came across Ichios, who had been turned <coughs> into stone. 
he spoke to his companions and said, Beware of the Medusa. He who looks into their eyes is doomed to the same fate as that which befell poor Ichios, and will never more set eyes on Seraphos. Must we go blindfolded? asked Emelopes. Take up your bronze shields and polish them until they flash in the sun, answered Perseus. Fill your hearts with courage. Fill them with it. All the books are narrated. I'm getting a walk, sir. For reasons. <clears throat> I'm not gonna keep using the walkthrough, but I'm gonna have it here in case I get stuck. Like right now, because I don't know how to get out of this room. Oh no. Oh no. Just not being able to get out of the room. I could interrupt his walk cycle and just kind of get look like he's limping. Eh, 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 eh. It almost seems faster than walking. I found an old Indian cover. Like. Run, run, run. There we go. He actually has to get him started. Found a bow. I'll take it. Oil for the lamp. Nothing. Still nothing. More nothing. I don't know what pissed off the orchestra there. It's locked. I found a key. Take the key. I should put some music on in the background. Old Calvary Saver. Now I can attack with this. So to attack, you hold space, and then you hit the arrow key in the direction you want to attack. But if you let go of the arrow key too soon, like I just did, you abort the attack. Interesting. And I broke it, which is probably really bad. Oh well.
Zambi. No, Zambi. Kind of like a burp. This thrilling combat system. Get rid of the keys. No, it doesn't. Okay. Labels of keys. I found a vase or a vase. Puppy, or a rat, or whatever, it's goofy. Can't even get a punch in. Oh, because I'm not even in fight. Mode. There, I punched it. Dick kick. Dick kick. Uh. And I'm dead. Congratulations, you've died. I've died, so you get this nice game over cutscene. This rather fashionable zombie drags your inert corpse. I actually would like a cookie. The end. And then cherry on top after this. We get the rifle. Here. Take this. I'm going to save on a room by room basis. <laughs> Probably a smart idea if we're honest with one another here. Yeah. <laughs> Running is so difficult. Okay, we know this room is safe. I'll save in a hallway.
bien. He shows up at the door. That's right. Telegram. Uh oh. Keep saying uh oh. Sorry. Oh shit! I have to reload it. Get fucked, Mister Mustache Man. Frog's Revenge. I did it. First fight survived. <laughs> Frog's Fractions 4. Oh my god. No, wait, that's fight. I'm still in fight mode. Oh, come on. You gotta fight the armoire. This one's in a gold shirt. You look like such a pugilist. <laughs> Put him up. And yet you... But you keep on kicking instead of punching. Kicking is better. I mean, I know kicking's better. You have twice the amount of strength in your legs than you do in your arms. On account of you have to carry your own whole body weight everywhere on your legs. Oh, man. I had a good thing going, too. Through it. You know what? Fine. Take. It's right. Just threw it straight ahead. I wanted the key that was inside of it. Oh, I thought you were going to throw it at somebody. I could have. I should have. The I fuck is that thing supposed to be? Yes. You're dead, Mr. Carnby. I feel weak. I'm gonna die. I have three hits left. Probably on account of how you kept on getting hit and didn't and nothing happened. Uh, time you got hit. I had no ammunition. <clears throat> All I can do is fight. Goodbye forever, death. Mm. 
Oh, that was progress. No. I ended awful scared. The chair got in my way. Alright, let's kill this guy because he's here and we've done it before. You're a master of the drunken fist. <laughs> no, sorry. Actually, you went to the um, Johnny Cage school of fighting because all you do is <laughs> kick in the nuts. I love that snap sound when, whenever you get the hit in. Oh god. Rook, please don't mention Frog Fact Fractions 4. I don't know why we bother burying people. Apparently they just turn into smoke when you kill them for the second time. Are you trying to punch that open? Uh, no, I hit spacebar without realizing it. Never left hand can't feel what it's doing. Oh yeah. Marquis of Queen's uh. Bay rules. Kick him in the door. I didn't actually throw it at someone. It looked like I just chucked it down. Nope, Carnby. Turn. Turn, damn you. I've got something for everybody. I gave put the link in chat for everyone else. Uh, okay, fuck that. Indo rat. Let's, it's just a uh, kill the rat thing. Take, throw, I don't need the broken vase. Now we fight. Through the bed! <clears throat> Bad fight, that makes it foreplay. That, that thing is so goofy looking. Yes. I think it's supposed to be a werewolf. Could be, but it looks way too rat-like. They're rat. He's like, I'm out of here. Oh no, I'm caught in a loop. I, uh. <laughs> well, that 
could have gone better. Small mirror. Two small mirrors. That doesn't seem right, but okay. First aid kit. You probably use that, yeah? Probably. Take an empty first aid kit. Bro. You can use it to beat other people with. Just chug this. Ah. And throw this. There's no water, and there's still no water. Maybe there's water in the closet. You know, where you keep your water. Yeah, in the water closet. Doesn't... Sexy succubus time. Is that what that is? Pretty sure. Not really interested in me, I guess. There's two of them. There's two of them. Maybe they just want to chat? Have a mirror. Oh. I am very confused. As am I. I'm, uh... I'm gonna reload that. So here we have the moon logic. Here we have the moon logic. You see, Ivan. Well, first off, I'm going to dump some excess items. Like uh, this key. I don't need it anymore. Are you sure? And yeah, I already opened the chest and the dresser. <clears throat> but just in case, I mean, this room is accessible, so sure. bathroom will be my item dump, at least on this floor. All right, so we have two mirrors. There's two flying scorpion demons and two naked woman statues. I wonder. Uh-huh. Why? Reflecting moonlight? Okay. All right. <laughs> Will you come to life and attack me? Because you seem like the type to do that. <sighs> yep.
<laughs> this is ridiculous. Apparently, this suit of armor never had a cod piece. <laughs> Carnby's right leg must be swollen shit. I'm trying to make a joke about an alone time hand and an alone time leg, but it's just not working. Kind of hard to have an alone time leg. Please. Please. <laughs> uh. I don't think that can die. Observe the moon logic puzzle again. How was anyone supposed to figure any of this shit out back in the day? No, no. Trial and error. Did I put down the lamp oil? I didn't want to do that. Lamp is now full. Love lamp. I love lamp. Some serious moon logic in this. <laughs> Maybe if I don't go near it, it won't attack. It's locked. Looks like the entrance hallway, yeah? I guess. Alright. You know what? Let's try the front door. Uh.
Okay. Don't go to the front door. <laughs> oh, yeah. Specs has the right uh, reaction there. <laughs> Okay, this is the room with a big purple thing. You don't want to fuck with it yet. Or rather, at all. This room is in the dark, and I'm alone in it. I mean, this lamp is off. I off! Use! I reloaded the lamp. It has oil. I I can see that it has oil. What 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 face? Nope. Carnby. Carnby, work with me here. What was in the post-mortem about this game? Also, does anyone know how to use this lamp? Right, pressing the L button. L? L. Nope. Controls hmm. seem to be limited to the arrow keys and the space bar. Have you tried the space bar? Yes. Oh, I don't have anything to light the lamp with. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Can I just... Okay, it worked. Uh, I guess that's just the purple thing. I'm not gonna open that. That seems like a bad idea. The, the window, I mean. They showed screenshots and video of the old software. They used to develop this in original animations, and the backgrounds weren't actually 3D renders. They used 3D software to wireframe the background and then paint it over them. Ah. Let's take that. Diary of Jeremy Hartwood. September 27th, 1924. I have decided to keep this diary. Too many inexplicable events have taken place recently. Never have dreams so haunted my every waking moment. <laughs> Perhaps my romantic mind was too dull and has only now woken up to these new paths and visions.
Some, seeing my recent paintings, may question my sanity. I can only ask them, what is sanity? Where does madness begin? September 28th, 1924. The night is pitch black. I am again drenched in sweat. I was wandering in the dunes, among giant standing stones. They were arranged in a circle, and the wind whistled about them. I plunged my hand into the soil and felt that repulsive thing which was trying to catch me. It seized me. I struggled to break free of its loathsome embrace and managed to tear my hand away. It was covered in sticky substance. I was yes. gripping a knife. October 5th, 1924. The stone circle is a pentacle. Der Seto's library is filled with books on the occult. I will study those books until I find some explanation for the dreams. The visions that haunt me must be connected to my discoveries. I shall have to undertake a profound exploration of my dreams. December 16th. Dear God, I have found the knife. It was hidden here, and what I have learned fills me with apprehension. It is a sacrificial dagger belonging to some unholy cult. The thought of that blade tearing through human flesh horrifies me, yet I must continue my research. Der Seto is a storehouse of treasures. Was my father right after all? January 23rd. I spend all my days plunged in dusty books. The servants are convinced I am mad. At night, I awaken them with my screams. The dreams are draining what sanity I still have. I have tried staying awake, but in vain. My visions have changed. No doubt the influence of my father's research. February 7th, 1925. The Dark Man, that is what I call him, has revealed his true face to me. He appeared, as usual, near the fireplace. But this time, he approached me. His terrible smile will haunt me to my dying day. His breath was ice and his burning eyes froze me. I could not move. I know, as surely as I have ever known anything, that the face I saw, the face that has turned my nights into hellish torture, is the mask of death. March 10th. My exhaustion is beyond description. The endless reading burns my eyes. It seems that pirates frequented the area. Dr. Herbert insists I keep to my bed. I have moved to another bedroom and sleep much better now. The dark man has not gone, however. I know it. He will wait for as long as he must. Unless I, Jeremy Hartwood, can find a way to send him back to whatever hell he comes from. March 11th. My poor knowledge of Greek and Latin is a serious handicap to my reading. I have, nevertheless, made a great step forward. I drew the symbol on the floor. He can no longer go there. I want him to understand that I can do the same thing in my bedroom. I can imagine his rage and frustration. Only last night he found his way back into my dreams. March 13th. The translation will seriously dent what money I have left. I cannot paint. My pictures are clearly the work of a lunatic. The collector Thornhill's embarrassed smile was proof of that. March 29th. He has come back. He found the door to my dreams. I am too weary to attempt any defense. I have no strength left to fight, and he knows it. He considers me dead already. Could I possibly? March 30th. How ironic. The cave my father sought for so many years is here, beneath the house. 
Wait. The butler discovered a crack in Props the to the reader. A breeze blows mm -hmm. in through it, icy and repugnant. I am filled with horror at the thought of my father dying in this place. I will carry to my grave the vision of his face contorted in the agony of that fatal heart attack. His body was twisted. He had wept. His fingernails were torn and Oof. bloody from scrabbling at the floor. Dr. Gray concluded that death had been due to a heart attack. It was Waits, who some time later was informed that my poor father had in fact bitten off his tongue and choked on his own blood. Wow. March 31st. I explored the caverns in a dream. The dark man came with me. Strangely, I felt almost well. How can I describe what I saw? No. What words are capable of explaining such evil? I realized that my death was of no interest to him. The dark man wants something else. He seeks a body. His avid servants are now free. I am the cause. <laughs> it is almost funny. A curse is on Dersetto. From the foundations to the very rooftop, I can no longer struggle, let alone eradicate the evil that grips the house. The end is very near. I can feel it. I have taken the decision to... <laughs> May he who finds this diary pray for my soul. I would clap. That, that was a damn good read. That's... Very good read. Oh, I saw that in the corner. And right, and punch, no, punch Carmi, punch Carmi, get in there. Stop. So the trick is to just kind of go ham and beat the ass. Yes, that makes sense. Am I? I'm at eight. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Glug, glug, glug. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Good throw. Okay, that's the dark room. Oh, wait, I remember this room. This is trapped. I don't want to go here yet.
has a ghost in that chair? If I remember right, ghosts are instant death on contact. You should test and find out. Did I? Mm, probably. Hello, man. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit, spheres. Truly the most Truly dangerous the of all beings. <laughs> Truly the, the deadliest of shapes. Photograph of Jeremy was his niece. Matchbooks. Cool. Uh, let's do the obvious here. Let's put the cartridges in the rifle. Oh wait, this this leads to instant death. We're not done up there yet. Like I didn't expect the ghost woman to turn into spheres and chant. <laughs> that was. Highly unexpected. Boopy tank control horror time says Shiraboof. It's true. It is totally true. The lamp is on. It's a good lamp. A heavy statuette and a book. Reading time. A brightness from afar by Lord Bolliskin. An account of his celebrated voyage to New England, 1824, Alistair Publication, How you doing, Shiro? Cambridge. Following a splendid journey, the sunny harbor came into sight. The locals were much impressed with one's arrival in their midst. It's like discount Sean Connor. One had time to sketch several of them. And Definitely someone who's trying to channel the Connery. Showed one their queer hands that would inspire uneasiness. Either that's a Q and it's wrong, or it's a G and pronounced weird. Definitely a Q that's, like, a little wrong. Yeah. Upon the promise of a few coins, a child has undertaken to reveal to one a most prodigious phenomenon of a natural order. Stop one referring to yourself as one. Skeptical as to the prodigiousness of the marvel, whatever it may be. Indeed, one suspects it to be little more than an evening stroll to some charming wooden hut situated in the forest hereabouts. One will nonetheless go, for it is always well to submit to such local enthusiasms. One admits to being somewhat flabbergasted. The Milky Way Stop referring to yourself like as one! The apocalypse <laughs> from the inky celestial vault. Certain if you don't... Stars normally invisible you're gonna be referring to yourself as zero! Visible. The pronouns are gonna be was were! The strange and... <laughs> the heavy clouds that had settled above the village had no hold over that place. <laughs> you alright? <laughs> Your pronouns are gonna be was were! Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I broke the rabbit. <laughs> it would be pointless to offer here the names of the constellations like one perceived in utter clarity. Apart from the interminable length of such a list, one might conceivably risk being charged with exaggeration. The cross cast its shadow <clears throat> on the ground. The sea in the distance was dead calm. Tonight, one will return to that spot and draw those stars. Tomorrow night, one will at last see Damn. Halley's comet in all its hey brilliance. The youngster will carry torches. Despite one's developed sense of direction, honed by years of travel, 
one feels incapable of finding one's way through the dark forest unaided. The drawings will. I'm real convinced. pissed off about this, Set by the way. To the souls of I can men. tell. Such a moon! One lost count of the craters, so sharply was their definition. Loath as one is to seem excessive in one's appraisal, one cannot but feel that the forest clearing is indeed a place outside the common laws of time and space. Surely it is not an hallucination. How strange to consider that idle conversation, some research in the British Museum, and a voyage to this backward village should culminate in so astounding a discovery. It may be that others have noticed the extraordinary nature of that place. How else could one explain the presence of that cross? Yeah. The obvious answer is one could not because one is fucking stupid. Door was. Yeah. A woo. A woo. That was definitely a new woo. Time to kill this thing. pick these up and dump them in a room that I'm never going to go into again so I stop bumping into them. Throw to the floor. Throw to the floor. video a million years ago. I do that, and he won't throw axes at me. <laughs> and I'm dead. I solved half of the problem. You know, that's just how it works sometimes. Here's the game over screening for those who missed it earlier. You get dragged to the final boss area and left, and then that happens. here for now. You have limited inventory space.
Three arrows. Spiders! Oh no! Ghost. That's what ghosts do. They, they, they turn into balls and go yoy and then instantly kill you. <laughs> and so it begins again. We don't want to go into the ballroom yet, because ghosts. Take, take, take. Bug out. Get it, because it's spiders. Let's do some math here. I got 28 hit points now. If I eat this, I feel better. I have 33 hit points now in an empty box. That's not an empty box. Throw. That's a little like the wind, sir. I got a knife. Nobody? <laughs> what do you have? A knife. No! Thank you. I feel better. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, like, what if you went back in time to the era when this game was made? And like, if I'm you had like some good knowledge of 3D, hey, you're gonna about to be murdered. Oh shit! Be down to 33 to 18. Yeah, I just wonder sometimes, like, 3D artwork is like a fairly common discipline these days. And if you were like sent back in time to when this game was made, if you had like, you know, modern knowledge of 3D, would you be able to do better than this? Or is it really just like limited from the tools and the, uh, the computers of the time? You find a box of shoes, but you can't carry anything else. Why do I have... Oh. No, I need this.
box of shoes. You can't carry anything else. Big shoes. Apparently. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> specs. Yes, you would know. Oh yeah, I've I've seen some old like vector software. Hi, right, Rasta Kiki. It's not pretty. Hey, Rasta Rasta Kiki. Let's uh, do what I was originally going to do. Drop this gramophone here. Mm. I love that super low English out there. A revolver. Oh, that's not a shoe at all. No room to drop the box. There's no room in the book. You have to put the box in the box. Combine the knife with the knife and put the box in the box. <laughs> Make a double knife. <laughs> double knife. anything matchbox I'll take a pot of soup the whole damn thing and a save we'll call that kitchen You just slowly back away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I remember that room. I have to uh, serve everybody cake with a knife. You're not super wrong. <laughs> The chair was supposed to stay over there by the dining room table. He's sitting down for a meal. What's the meal, you? A pot of soup. In the soup, you? A pot of boxes. I can't be in the soup. I'm walking here. I can't be in your soup. I'm walking here. That's stupid. an ashtray. Ooh. Where'd the jug go? <coughs> hey, do the thing. Sound effect was that? Yes.
Those are locked. That's where I came from. Now we're here. And that's the front door, which is instant death. But you know what, zombie? We're here for that, so I'll do it again. Yeah. Things we do for friends. Yeah. So, I'm gonna leave this place. Oh. <laughs> the end. Cause of death inhalation. All right. Run. Run. There we go. I don't want the gramophone if I can't even carry it. Wait. 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 Oh, wait. Oh, that, that's that stupid ghost. So this painting would start throwing uh, axes at us. So we cover it, and now he can't see us. And then we save. at the end. So, we got through the trap hallway. Nice uncomfortable seat. The book. Read the book. It's a fake book. <laughs> Well, I might have a use for it. I don't know. Hollow it out and put the gun in it. Possibility. Possibility. That's what I had for dinner tonight. Endless possibilities. Wow. Did that mean that you're still having dinner and what interest me? No, I lied. It was, in fact, finite possibilities. I found a key and some parchment. The Creatures of Night <laughs> by Hubertus the Bald. Translated from Latin by his brother in prayer, Fratre Johann Marcus. Of monstrosity. You who read me know that night engenders monsters and that night creatures exist. The accursed book of Abdul al-Hazred is clear on this matter. That is not dead which can eternal lie. Unhappy he who knows that book. Unhappy he whose eyes alight upon that foulest of texts. Unhappy he who implores the standing stones. 
for he will free the powers of darkness. Of the pit. Stagnant waters are like the memory of men. Beneath the surface calm, clawed beasts await and are known to initiates as the deep ones. Oh. Awaiting of Awaiting his prey, the Deep One seizes him and drags him down to the abyss, where Dagon, the cruel god, swims and reveres him whose name may not be pronounced. This is just straight up Lovecraft. Of libraries. I didn't know this was a Lovecraft game. Unhappy he who frees the prowler. Dagon? Unhappy he who meets the prowler erring among the books. He generates the vagabond that comes from other spheres. He believes the vagabond does not exist. He will feel the embrace of death, for in the eyes of the vagabond, books are no more than dreams, stone no more than wind. The vagabond knows how to take the breath of the reckless of strife. He who speaks does not know, and believes he is able to kill the creatures of the night. Folly. Evil is conjured up by science and secrecy. And then the reader took a very long break. Hmm. He oh. who prowls among books will perish by the blade. He who flies in the dark caverns will scream in fear. He oh, wait a minute. Look down there. Strife. There's a P. Like, he like I guess they wanted to put like a page break there or something, and they know. fucked it oh, up. Weird. And of translator's note. Here ends the manuscript of Hubertus. Hubertus. So hard to get that running going. Was it double tap? It's like you have to hold up just long enough to get him to start walking, let go, and then tap again. <laughs> well, I have the key to this now, I think. Miss something? The three amigos stuck in the haunted house. Here yeah. crossover. Yeah. Oh, there was a door here. Fun fact that the scene on the on the right is the final room of the game. Prognostication. Boy, this looks suspicious. <laughs> it 
this is like the equivalent of uh, watching a cartoon and seeing a uh, like one tree that's like lighter than all the others up. That's going to be animated soon. Yep. Wait, look closely. Oh no, that's on an animation cell. <laughs> uh, this goes here. <gasps> it's a grimace. Oh no. Gonna tickle your pickle. It's Vector Man. It's the Grimace. <laughs> you know, the anthropomorphic taste bud of, of McDonald's. His name was the Grimace? Yeah. Or Grimace. Well, I mean, to be fair, he used to have like four arms, six arms, and was green or something. Yeah, and apparently he, it was apparently it was supposed to be a taste bud. Oh. Why did they name it Grimace? That's a bad a, face. He he was a bad guy. He was he was like the hamburger. He's like I'm gonna steal all the hamburgers with all my many hands, and then and then Ronald McDonald was like, no, you you can you no. Know. And then Grimace was like, oh okay, I'll be a good guy, and then he lost all his arms. Is the mechanism the trigger? Now that I know that, can I do this? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. I'm letting him catch up a little bit. Reminds me, there's a uh, there's a new defunct land about Burger King. I haven't watched yet. Oh, yeah, we should exciting. watch it after stream. What is? Or after movie night? Yeah. Carnby. Yeah. You find a talisman. Blink. And I search here for a dagger. Take, take, take. That's too many items. A book. A book. A book. A, a book. sacrificial and dagger. A book. A book. The importance book. placed book. on ritual and sacrifice dagger. is dagger. constant in religious cult practice. Propitiating the gods is a theme common to many religions. The Old Testament affords many examples. Primitive polytheistic belief systems integrate sacrifice in their rituals as part of the recurrent process of reaffirmation and, naturally enough, group cohesion. Naturally. The members of their social and religious community come together in an act of purification and atonement. It would be erroneous to imagine the act of human sacrifice, linking priest, offering, and God, C.F. Manzetti, Stone Cults, as anything less than a vital focusing of the group's faith. The act also ensures the continuing appeasement of the God, but only if practiced by a recognized officiating priest using the appropriate instrument. Studies made concerning primitive religious groups bear witness to the central role of sacrifice in living ritual. My own work in the field of ethnopsychology brought me into contact with a sorcerer living in the region of Arkham. He introduced me a to sorcerer. the rite of steel, linked to a ceremony known as adoring the black goat of the woods with a thousand youngs. The god being adored is known as the Vagabond. Oh yeah, we heard about that not too long ago. Here, the dagger's roll, which allows the life breath to pass from one dimension to another, is essential. The Vagabond is a frightening figure, being able to move where he wants and to kill those who have displeased the Goat Guard. 
for whom he acts as a go-between. The goat is clearly a fertility god. The priest, having spoken the invocation, must choose the appropriate dagger for the sacrifice. Oh. The knife with a sinusoidal blade that must be dipped seven times on night when the moon is full in water that has been distilled a hundred times will be laid aside Jesus Christ. since it would send the vagabond back into his own dimension. See illustration. <laughs> the priest will rather choose the dagger with a curved blade. That is more appropriate for slitting of the lamb's throat. This act transfigures the sorcerer priest and plunges the assembled worshippers into a divine trance. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Sacrificial blade. Right, that's the fortune. So what's this? The Book of Yael. Signs of Stone. Eucharistic Rituals of Forbidden Cults. Texts collated by Monsignor Vache, legate in the Curia of the Vatican. Numerous devilish cults speak of monstrous creatures called the Old Ones. These supernatural beings are believed to be possessed of powers equivalent to those of the gods of antique religions. Adepts of such cults refer to forbidden literature in order to cause these frightful what serious do blah 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 it blah, is blah. why we must Satan forever run something something okay so we have that dagger and that dagger and that dagger grab this one real quick and if I understand Only as the camera doesn't. No. I win. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, um. The, we read that. And we read that. And read that. And read that. That. This is a stack of books. Ludwig Prien, nomine invocatoris, sin oh, sancti. Yep, that was the, that was the insta death book. What? <laughs> I was gonna show that off, but I thought it was the one on the counter. I didn't know I had it in my inventory. Yeah, so you know, you you, you read all the books in the game. Great, good for you. Here's one that kills you instantly with no warning. Wow, rude. Take, leave, 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 and yoink. Then we'll uh, drop this. Drop this. Drop this. <clears throat> Don't think I actually need these. But we know where they are. And we'll re equip the dagger. 
Ew. Oh, pretty. Hold on a second. Yeah, there is an instant data. He just looks like he's gonna fuck your day up. <laughs> he's so angry. He is. I mean, I can't blame him. He looks like he's running, either running out of coffee or he's baked. <laughs> little A, little B. Does he like tend to look angry or is his health is lower? How's that work? Uh, no, he has the, like the same face, like forever. Forever. No, don't go upstairs. Bill was upstairs. And we dealt with the second story. And we go to the first floor. Grab our gramophone. Or the spider room. I don't want to be here yet. Uh, Carn beat today. Thank you. We just wanted to do that so we could get rid of the key to the cellar. He actually threw it this time. <laughs> Looks oddly incomplete. Sure am glad that I have an old cavalry saver. Record.
<clears throat> the tale of Captain J. W. Norton of the Army of the Union. 1862. The South was in collapse. Louisiana was open to us. I had each day to It has been three months since my last troops. letter to you. It was aided in this endeavor by a score of brave men. Rebels were not yet ready to lay down their arms. The region was far from safe. I headed further and further west and questioned many freed slaves. From them, I learned of a plantation on the coast. Its name was Dersetto. We received a less than hearty welcome. Only Pickford, the owner, behaved in a friendly manner. While my men counted cattle and grain reserves, I learned what I could from him. The man was most unusual and possessed an extraordinarily cultured mind. At nightfall, I gave orders for the men to bivouac at Dersetto. Pickford invited my second-in-command, Lieutenant Patterson, and myself to dine. Bivouac is not something you hear very often. And our host was right. the most entertaining conversationalist. While coffee was being served, Patterson went to inspect the men's camp. The cigar Pickford offered me was so acrid that my head began to spin. I remembered campfire tales of fellow officers trapped by devilish Confederate tricks. My mind floated in a foul and dense fog from which emerged the enlarged and deformed face of Pickford. He grinned at me. Oh, I hate that rabbit. <laughs> Patterson's return chased off the nightmare. I heard shouts and firing from outside and found the strength to take out my revolver. I fired three shots. Pickford I missed. fell to the floor. <laughs> Patterson then helped me out of the burning house. The air was filled with smoke. We resembled a company in disorderly retreat. I saw slaves leaping into the flames of that inferno. They were trying to save Pickford's life. Okay, I know that those stairs lead to the end game. We're almost there, but not there yet. We should have pirates. Uh... Oh my god, he's coming! Is that me or him? Uh, I think it was you.
Maybe you just need to shoot him. <laughs> no, I just gotta be better at this than I am. Yeah, like that. Got him. Well. I'm nearly dead. Indiana Jones fight him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Okay. These are ghosts, so, uh... You know, I'll do this just in case. If someone didn't see what a ghost does... through the door. <laughs> That's the blue Danube. Take. These fuckers. Uh. Is it not how physics work? Okay.
you a rat man? A rat man, you say? Oh, whatever it is. Uh, if we can get this revolver ready. Edward Kahn, be stops for nothing. Done with books. <laughs> Sometimes you're up. And I am weak enough right now that a rat can kill me. Uh, that's not fair at all. Also, <laughs> wow, look at that animation. Don't go that way. All right. <clears throat>
Now the place should start to look familiar as this is where uh Oh hi. <gasps> look this a friend! The same tunnels where you get dragged to when you die and see the game over screen. I don't think he can do anything from here. Uh not unless you get onto the pier. Boy, that section of it looks real weird. A spider rat. <laughs> oh, it's cute. Army, aim. Ew, it's got a butthole. Yeah. Now it's dead now. <gasps> Polar place. Oh, Thank you for the raid. Welcome. Hope Hello. Welcome. What's Someone do the to? do the shout out command exclamation s o their name. Uh. Iggy, can you do that? If my fingers work. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there is a 95 in there. <laughs> there we go. Peace saver. Nice. Me too. I had a night light for quite some time. I sense a platforming section. It's a terrible camera. I can't believe you did that on your first try. That was all In. skill. Into the meat.
think so. Seems bad. Uh, Andy? Uh, it's not really doing anything. It's too it short. Is. You're aiming over it. I think I just don't go that way. I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Is the beach and all the clams you can eat. That's okay. Oh, my God. That this whole section just falls off. Huh. Oh, what is this nonsense? jump the trap. Oh, no. <laughs> the recoil. pretty scared there. Yeah. But no biscuits. Memoirs of a Lost Soul. The mask must fall. <sighs> you who discover this manuscript understand this. I am here at your side. 
I am waiting in the darkness of my crypt. Soon you will belong to me. One of my slaves wrote this document. I have lived for three centuries, and my name is Ezekiel Prakst or Elia Pickford. You may choose which to call me. I do not hide out of fear. My power is immense. I have sailed the seven seas. My ship, the Astarte, spread terror through all the continents. The Corsairs judged me like the Welsh judges of 1620, but they could not destroy me, and neither could the pirates. Now! I am immobilized. Damned Yankees! So he went from pirate lord to confederate to whatever he is now. Witchcraft. A ghost? Voodoo and the Cthulhu cult. I know them all. I have reigned and implored the stones. Only the Catonian yep. haunts the cavern and resists me, but he dare not attack. It's a Louisiana I plantation. I have need of a living body to regenerate myself. The Heartwoods managed to escape from me, but you who are reading these words, you will yield to my embrace. I hear your ragged breath <laughs> and smell the stench of your fear. I have vanquished death. I built Deceto. I know what it is to wait. Cthulhu helps me. My servants will lay you upon the sacrificial stone. My roar will rend the night. You will be mine, and I shall reign once more. <laughs> what? Come to me. That was a lot of nothing. Unless there's clues in there that I didn't recognize. <laughs> oh, where that goes? Okay, yeah. I have one hit point, everybody. Nope. Is there Just any way hit. to get anything back? Nope. Not anymore. Biscuits. Amaze in the dark. How amazing. Oh. Uh, one moment, folks. I'm going to the bathroom. <gasps> and I suppose it's time, too, because that lantern's not going to last forever, right? Pretty much. Ugh. 
Oh, it's multi-screen too? What is this? 1992 survival horror. It's a fucking nightmare. I glad I have a guy. Oh, good. Take go downwards, turn right until you come to a stone door. Well, that unequips the lantern. Yeah, because you only have your hands free for not a door. That's a door. Here we are, the final room. <laughs> the boss is a tree. That's what he meant by he is immobilized. He has been turned oh. into a tree. Oh! It's the bed of chaos, only hopefully it doesn't sweep you into uh, a bottomless pit seven times. Ugh, fucking Christ. <laughs> oh. <Are we> off? <laughs> Negative oh. two, if anyone's wondering. Took a while for deaths to set in. Action sequence. I find a hook and we'll place the talisman. That'll stop the fireballs. Cause they got killed right there. Oh, bullshit. That's bullshit. It is. A little faster, Carnby. Excuse me. I need one to stay on screen for a little bit. So the matches are wet, the, the uh, lamp won't activate, and now I take the lamp and throw it. Oh, you missed. Oh no, I missed. <laughs> Hopefully it stays there, because otherwise it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> Clip that, cause that's just funny. Oh, oh good. <laughs> it helps if I actually hit the tree. Well, you know, you're not wrong. Nice MS paint fire. 
Get out of there. Hey, Carnby. Hey, remember this door? That's nice, at least you can actually see now. <clears throat> Hold on. Never would have figured that out. Back here. Made a wrong turn. So are there still things out to kill you now that the tree is dead? Uh, no, everything should be dead except for the things that would kill me like gravity and... Good. Damn, gravity, <coughs> our immortal enemy. It has always been mankind's wish to kill gravity. Yeah, that's why we keep going to space. <clears throat> space. Oh yeah, and the two books. <laughs> Mankind's immortal enemy books that kill you instantly. A rat just fucking turned the corner and killed me. Weirdly anticlimactic, but I, then again, I guess this isn't really an action game. I mean, it's anticlimactic. We're about to have the ending right here. <clears throat> well, I'm at the escape sequence. Huh? I'm outside. Free train. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> it's time to kick the sun in the balls. Get the happy bass guitar. I say, my good man. Say hi to Zombie. He's your driver this evening. Hello, it's me. The end. Question mark. Question mark. Nah, the end. Question mark. Yeah, we're done.
That's and it. that was that was alone <laughs> in the dark. I uh, I didn't expect to beat it in one go, but uh, there you are. That was the start of our retro horror weekends. Uh, I'll come up with something for tomorrow. It's just gonna play the intro all over again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so every weekend, uh, we'll be doing a uh, series of retro games. Uh, it just happens that this month being October, they're going to be all horror based. <clears throat> oh yeah, you weren't here for this. That was the best animation in the game. Yeah, weirdly uh, overly detailed uh, frog. Let me do the ending. Where I thank all of you for spending your evening with us once again. And special thanks to all of our subscribers scrolling on screen right now. We couldn't do what we do without your support. If you'd like to support the channel, please follow us here on Twitch and on Twitter at Team Retroflux. Subscribe to our YouTube down below for all of our past playthroughs. Uh, if you want to support us more directly, <clears throat> there's a Patreon link down below. Uh, September's over, unfortunately. Oh. But if you have Prime Gaming, you've got that one free sub you can give out to the streamer of your choice. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that could be us. Now we like to end things with a raid. Who be on? Ah, Deoxo's on. Let's go say hi to the panda. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, maybe with World of Horror. We'll change it up a bit. Uh, I'll let you know on Twitter. Uh, but have a good night. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.